I don't have PowerPoints. <laughs> not the best, not the best bad. <clears throat> I have my timer as well. If you're taking notes, the two words you're going to write down are implicit attitude. Those are the two words for my 10 minute presentation. Implicit attitude. I am 30 something years of age. And I am actually very upset at this moment. I'm very upset at this particular moment because of the events that happened on that Saturday. And the most interesting thing about the events that happened on that Saturday is that when I heard that an unarmed black teenager was killed by a white police officer, in my particular community and the individuals that I talked to, our first response was, that makes sense. It wasn't, what did that black teenager do? It wasn't, oh my gosh, he must have robbed somebody. It was, that makes sense. Sense. Some of the conflict that we're dealing with between blacks and whites is because we're coming at it from two different perspectives or angles based on the implicit attitudes that we might have. Is this whistling or is that me? I was raised by a mother, and her mother's a very excellent person. My particular mother said that you should excel and achieve in everything that you do, and no matter how much you should achieve and excel, just be aware of one particular fact, and that one particular fact is that people are going to say things about you because your skin is black. And I didn't mean to rhyme right there, that's just how it came out. <laughs> but um, she, when she said that to me, she wasn't saying, oh, because you're black, you're supposed to be strong. Because you're black, know what happened in Africa. She was saying, because you're black, people are going to associate you with several different things. One is gonna be criminality. They're gonna say that you're a criminal. Second, they're gonna say you're gonna have this authority problem, you're gonna be disrespectful. And third, when you're in school and they talk about slavery, they're gonna look right at you because obviously because you're black, you know more about it. They wanna know what your opinion is. My opinion like yours is that slavery is a horrible thing, but I myself am not a slave. The events that happened on Saturday didn't surprise those in that particular area because they were taught the exact same thing. That even though they're struggling and striving to make things work, regardless people are going to see them as criminals, criminals who have absolutely no respect for the things that are going around them. They're going to be lazy. They're just raised by single moms whose only job is to push out more babies and keep their hands out to get more things because that's what's taught. That's what's put out in the media. It is not that we're saying that an individual who's black is a victim. It's a simple fact that it's a reality that you have to live within. So when I heard what happened on that Saturday, I said, wow, that makes sense. And the individuals in that particular community were outraged as they should be because they saw one of their own gunned down in the streets. And your very first response is, wait a minute, wait a minute, let due process work. Don't jump to conclusions. There you go again, they're just being too emotional. That's what they're going to do. It does make sense to be emotional when an individual that you feel is a part of a community that you see as a brother, you feel that you just gunned down recklessly for no particular reason. So they waited, just like I waited for Sunday when no information was going to come out. And that new information was going to help quell the uprising that was happening. And you know what that new information said? That new information said the perspective that individual is going to take is simply this. Mike Brown caused his own death because he did a strong arm robbery an hour and a half before. And everyone knows that when you do a robbery, death should happen next. What the individuals in the community heard was the exact same thing I heard. It was a blaming the victim, and therefore, those are the consequences. I'm going to make a comparison real fast that might hurt others. I'm not trying to. If I had a daughter who was raped, by a man. I know she was raped. And I asked the police for information. And your first response was, you know, she slept with two guys the night before, but we're pretty sure she was raped, maybe. How mad would that make you? Because you're basically saying that my daughter deserved what happened to her. And that's how it felt on that Sunday, that you basically said that he robbed and therefore, death is what happened. The second thing that information did is it rewrote the narrative. It said that, hey, it makes sense that the officer stopped him and that maybe Mike Brown reached into the car because we know he's a violent criminal. 
because we have a videotape of it. It wasn't a situation where the African American community was sitting there like, let's go riot, let's go loot. We were saying, give us information that makes sense. And your response to that particular information, referring to the police, was to blame the individual for the act, it's the criminal act that occurred. So people started to get mad, so they started to protest and stand on the streets. And if you've never been in that particular area, I'm going to assume you've never been in that particular area, where the protest initially happened is a very narrow two-way lane. An individual was standing on both sides of that very narrow two-way lane, and they said, we don't want to take this, we don't want to handle this. The police came driving through with truck after truck, trying to go through and break up this protest, and the protesters stood there and said, we're not going to move, hands up, don't shoot us. And they stood in the street and they said, hands up, don't shoot us, because they're telling you we are tired and fed up, number one, of being called a criminal every time that you see us, and saying that we have an authority problem. So the police brought the dogs out, which is a form of crowd control. And the response was, you don't see what I'm saying. You don't understand what I'm saying. And I'm not even telling you as an African American that my perspective or view was right or wrong. I'm simply telling you that my particular view was an alternative view of how to look at things. See, your particular view is that obviously Officer Wilson is right because he's the police and they don't do wrong. And my particular view, based on my particular experience, is I don't know who's right or wrong, but it's a possibility that Officer Wilson could have been wrong. And you reject my particular view because of what we call an implicit attitude. An implicit attitude is simply the acceptance of an idea that I don't even have a conscious thought about. I'm going to give you a quick example. If you go to your class and you sit next to a person named Bertha, Bertha, she's sitting there with you. In your mind right now, the first image that you see is not a small, blonde-haired, petite individual. <clears throat> it's not. It's either someone very large or who looks very, very old. Because that's what Bertha suggests to you. It's the same way that when you walk around a particular campus and you have to ask notes from a particular student you've never seen before, you can ask either Jim or you can ask Shawana. Who will you ask, Jim or Shawana? And it's not because you are inherently racist, it's because we accept ideas because we don't know other information. Implicit attitudes does not say, you are racist walking around. It says individuals put things out there and we tend to accept. And that is the recurring problem. My esteemed colleague brought out some amazing statistics, and I appreciate them because they're accurate. And they're not saying that we are all individuals who are trying to hurt other people. We just accept basic ideas. Our view of America is amazing, but a lot of times our view is constricted by the individual that we see in the mirror, and we label that person the American. So that when you see someone who looks a little bit different than you, you have an automatic assumption of what that person knows or has been through. You see someone who's a little different than you, and you say to yourself, wow, I wonder how long they've been here. Wow, you look a little different from my particular area. Can I ask you a question? And your response, of course, is what is that question they ask you? What's it like to be a, like a paid for bride? Because you look like you're from another country. I know they do that over there. You ask that particular question because someone looks different than you. You ask me a question, because I mentioned slavery, which is interesting, because you assume I have a belief that's different than yours, that I might have a belief that's inherently worse than yours, but it's a horrible situation. And someone says, how do you fix implicit attitudes? It's becoming aware that you have them. Police are more likely to shoot at a black criminal who's armed than a white one. That's implicit attitude. They're not walking around, shoot black people. They just associate black with criminality. Teachers in the school district teach black students different than teachers that are in white school districts. It's not because teachers are saying black is worse. They lower the expectation because they think because you're black, you might not know everything. So if you give an answer that's low quality, I accept it because I know you're trying. Doctors are less likely to prescribe, and to prescribe treatment for black patients simply because they're black individuals. They're not saying, I want black people to die, but there's, and the idea is that because you're black, you're less likely to follow the treatment, not least in my behavior changing. When I watch television 
and the biggest thing on television now is ISIS, ISIS, ISIS. And that actually starts to prime you. So that if someone says that they're Muslim, your first idea is, oh man, you must be cutting off the heads of people. It's not because you're a racist person, it's because you're accepting an implicit idea or attitude. The best and fastest way to fix that is be aware that you actually have it. You can't ever sit and reject the idea that I have accepted what the media says. When I watch television, I watch a lot of television, I watch it like my son watches it, and I'm running over. And I watch it like my son watches it, and I don't see anybody that looks like him. Sorry. My son is, um, he wants to date someone. He's 17. And the reason I know that there are implicit attitudes is that he went out with this girl, and she was like, that. That's neither here nor there. He said, Dad, I like her. He said, She's all right. He said, Dad, I really like her. And I said to him, Do the parents know that you're, you're black? He's like, I haven't told them yet. I said, Be careful. So he went out with her and he liked it. He's like, I love her. <laughs> I love Isabella. That's what he The father met him for the first time, and the next day she said she couldn't be with him. That's all I have.